Hello, welcome back to this video tutorial series, the Deconstructing Group Agent 5, and today we're talking about MIDI channels, which is going to help us understand how to distinguish pattern data from instrument data flowing between Group Agent and Cubase. It's also going to give us a little bit of an insight into how multiple agents can live within one plugin um, simultaneously. First things first, I'm going to show you the problem that we have with dealing with pattern information and instrument uh, information at the same time. Let me just load a beat agent kit. And we just click a, just choose a, a, a random sound. If this D sharp two is a ride, a bit of a spacey kind of ride sound. Let's have a look at the pattern pads to see what's going on on D sharp two because the pattern pads and the instrument pads, there are 128 of them each, and they both map to the same notes on the keyboard. They go from C minus two up to G8. That means you can theoretically have pattern pads and instrument pads rooted to the same key. And in fact, that happens quite commonly, particularly with acoustic, acoustic agent kits that have a lot of um, sounds. It's very common to have patterns and instruments mapped to the same key. And you need to know what to do with that information. I'm going to illustrate the problem that we have with trying to manage these two things using the same key with this groove. I right click copy and paste that groove into D sharp two on the pattern pad side. Now we've mapped two different things to the same key. We've got this groove. And we also have this instrument. Now, listen and watch what happens when I press D sharp two on the keyboard. See the light, the ride light isn't lighting up. By default, if you route patterns and instruments to the same pad in Groove Agent, the pattern overrides the instrument and you don't hear that ride sound. Well, that's rubbish. We want to be able to hear all of the sounds for both instruments and patterns. At our behest, you know, we don't want to have sounds taken away from us simply because we've routed two different things to the same key. We need two different communication channels by which we can give different kinds of instructions to Cubase. Let's nip over to, uh, to Cubase itself to see how it sees Groove Agent. And here we have the instrument track and you can see that it's taking an input from my keyboard, the Novation Impulse. That's what means when I press the key, that's how data is getting sent to Groove Agent. The output simply says Groove Agent. So I press the D sharp two on the keyboard, that data gets transmitted to Groove Agent as a simple instruction. Here is a D sharp two, do something with it. Groove Agent has to figure out what to do with that. Now, without being given any other instructions, it will say, well, I've got a pattern and an instrument, pattern wins, I'll play the groove. I wanna be able to send trigger either a groove or the ride sound by hitting a D sharp two. That's my, that's, that's the mission. Back over in Groove Agent, there's a, a couple of options that uh, you need to learn, and they're kind of buried. They're in the Pattern tab, and they're down here. These two little buttons with the G and the P are really important, and you need to learn them and remember where they are. The G, although important, we're not going to talk about right now. This is a, a global setting that basically routes uh, pattern information to multiple agents at the same time. We're not at that level of complexity yet. I don't want you to worry about it, but I do want you to turn it off. <laughs> this function over here, however, is critical. It says use pattern MIDI port for pattern pads. By default, it's not on, and I think it should be. I want you to turn that function on. Having done that, let's go back to Cubase. And now, instead of dealing with the instrument track, I'm going to create a MIDI track. And I'm going to set it to the right colour because I'm anal. So here I have a MIDI track. I'm going to set it to channel 1. 
let's have a look at the inputs and outputs we've got available to us now that we're in the MIDI world. Our inputs has defaulted to Groove Agent Kit 1. You may recall that Groove Agent isn't just one drum machine, it's four. You can have four completely independent drum machines in these four agent slots, rack slots, operating simultaneously, producing completely different sounds. These are kits one, two, three, and four. You can see kit two, kit three, and kit four here. They're all grayed out. We're only dealing with one kit at the moment, but that's what they are. This is what allows you to have those four instruments pumping out data to Cubase on different MIDI ports. So this is a MIDI out port from Groove Agent, and it's a MIDI in port in Cubase. You've always got an in on one side and an out on the other, and MIDI data only ever travels in one direction down any particular pipe. So here we've got our input ports, our MIDI input ports into Cubase. Now they're no good to us just at the moment because I want to be able to hit keys on my keyboard. This is my MIDI input device at the moment. So I'm gonna set that to impulse. Let's have a look at the outputs. We've got two separate MIDI outputs from Cubase to Groove Agent. So these are output ports from here, but from the Groove Agent perspective, they're input ports. And this is what allows us to distinguish between pattern data and instrument data. This word main should be the word instrument. It drives me mad. I don't know why they've done it. It's crazy. So if you imagine you kind of mentally substitute the word in instrument into there, this says when you're, in, when you're communicating on that port, you're sending instrument data to, to, to Groove Agent. If I hit a D-sharp 2, it's an instruction to play whatever note is mapped to D-sharp 2, it's basically ride. If I'm communicating on this channel down here, it means if I press D-sharp 2 and hold it down, play whatever groove is mapped to D-sharp 2. Completely different functionality. And when we create MIDI tracks, we get access to both of those uh, features. And that's why I recommend that any interaction that you have with Groove Agent is done via MIDI tracks rather than the instrument track. If you've got no interest in dealing with patterns and no interest in dealing with multiple agents and you're using it purely as a drum machine, knock yourself out using the, use the instrument track, it'll work. But the moment you start using patterns and instruments at the same time, switch to MIDI tracks. Now, just for the moment, let's set it to main and I'm going to press D sharp two. There's your ride. Flip over to pattern. That's how we distinguish data coming out of Cubase into Groove Agent on different MIDI ports. Note that on both of those tracks, let's, uh, let's create both of them at the same time. So let's call this um, agent one, instrument and this is agent one pattern. let's prove that both of those things can run simultaneously create a couple of events In this event, I'm going to input D sharp two. And in this event, I'm going to input, you guessed it, D sharp two. Play them both at the same time. like something off the, the film Christine, John Carpenter, classic, classic John Carpenter film. So we've now established distinct lines of communication from Cubase to Groove Agent. Fantastic stuff. What's the deal with those four kit ports on the input stuff? Let's have a little bit more of a look at those. In order to demonstrate what those ports do, 
I'm going to load a second agent up. So this is a completely independent drum kit with its own patterns. And there's our sound on D sharp two, kind of a thin, insipid kind of thing. I'm going to copy the groove over onto uh, D sharp two. Now have a look at the MIDI channel. This beat agent by default operates on MIDI channel two. Each time you activate one of these agents, it will default to a MIDI channel of the same number as the kit number. You can also see down here that the pattern MIDI channel has been set to two as well. And that's great, that's what we want. So everything about the second beat agent is the number two. Let's just create a new track. And I'm going to set this to MIDI channel two. I'm going to call it Agent Two Instrument. And there's my D sharp two. So this track is going to be the pattern track. So I'm going to assign it to Groove Agent Pattern. MIDI channel two is correct. And there's the second groove. That's the second beat agent groove. To show you how the kit inputs work, I'm going to set Agent 1 Instrument to Kit 1 and Agent 2 Instrument to Kit 2. Jump over to Groove Agent. Now what I want to do is have Groove Agent play those grooves, broadcast them on their output channels, Kit 1 and Kit 2. Group Cubase is going to receive that data and I want Cubase to record that data on its corresponding MIDI tracks as MIDI data. I want it to record the actual MIDI data, not the note on trigger for the pad itself. You can do that very easily. You can basically link Cubase and Groove Agent together with this function up here called follow transport. And you have to do it individually for each agent. So as things stand at the moment, only Beat Agent 2 is linked to Cubase. There's no way to do it globally for all agents, unfortunately. But now that I've done that, when I press record, I can output two separate grooves as MIDI data streams to Cubase simultaneously. In order to do it, I need to record arm both of the tracks and then just press record. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got. We have two completely independent, completely separate MIDI tracks. Have a look at where I recorded that data. This track over here is outputting to the Groove Agent instrument track. Now, if I press play as things stand at the moment, there's gonna be a bit of a chaos of noise because Groove Agent is still in follow mode. So we need to disengage follow transport. Once we've done our recording, we've linked them together, we've recorded data out of Groove Agent into Cubase, and we've got we've captured our MIDI data. Disengage follow transport because every time you press play on Cubase, Groove Agent will fire up as well, and it will be playing basically two copies of the same data. So we've disengaged follow transport, and let's listen to them each individually. Here's the uh, data from channel one, channel two, completely separate drum kits, different drum agents are generating these sounds. There's both of them at the same time. Now you could accomplish if exactly the same sound as that by creating two events on the pattern tracks and playing those instead. So what I'm doing here, I'm not sending individual kit instrument 
information to Groove Agent anymore. I'm simply sending an instruction to play a groove. Here's D sharp two, play whatever's on your pattern pad for that groove. Sounds exactly the same. The difference is with the instrument tracks, we've got that flexibility to now edit that MIDI data inside Cubase itself. But hopefully that's given you an illustration of what these different kit one, two, three, and four outputs from Groove Agent inputs to Cubase are all about. Now, having spent a fair portion of this video talking about agents one and two, it's only fair for me to say that I pretty much never use multiple agents in Groove Agent for various reasons. There's a really fantastic feature in Groove Agent where you can assign uh, all the outputs from Groove Agent en masse into Cubase, but it only works for a single agent. There are really good reasons why I only use one agent inside Groove Agent. It's a little bit CPU intensive. That's about it, really. I really don't lose much functionality by only ever using one agent. But I thought it was important to show you multiple agents because that explains what these MIDI ports are all about. And when, when you have that light bulb moment and you go, right, four output ports from Groove Agent to Cubase, two output ports from Cubase to Groove Agent can then communicate on any one of 16 independent channels. So there's, a, there's an awful lot of flexibility about different pipes that you can communicate on, but they all have different purposes. The kits are for outputs from Groove Agent. The main and pattern ports are from outputs from Cubase. And then we use the MIDI channel number itself to distinguish between agents numbers one, two, three, and four. And if you remember those few simple rules, you'll be absolutely fine. So I hope that's demystified the um, MIDI port and channel settings in, in Groove Agent for you. It is a little bit overwhelming when you first get into them, but if you, if you develop this disciplined philosophy, always channel one, two, three, and four, always Groove Agent main and pattern, it, it really does become pretty intuitive pretty quickly and you don't get into this situation where you're stumbling over yourself and you press a note on the keyboard and you've got no idea whether you're going to hit a, a pattern or an instrument. You keep the things totally separate. Your life will be much, much easier, I guarantee it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, subscribe, hit notifications. I'll see you for the next episode. Thanks very much for watching.